So we all know that downloading and running random applications from the internet always comes with some level of risk. Obviously, the risk can be mitigated by downloading that application from its official source, but there's still always some level of risk there. And if you don't know what an application is going to do, you should also never run it with sudo. But with that being the case, there is a really interesting pattern we see to install applications. So if you've been to any reasonable number of Git repos, you've probably seen a command like this. So either curl or wget, usually curl, just because curl is more popular. Then from some web server, you will download the install script, and then you'll pipe that install script into sudo bash or zsh or fish or some sort of shell. Now, if this server is just using HTTP and is not using HTTPS, do not download the script like this. HTTP is not an encrypted connection. It is very, very trivial for someone to get in the way of that connection, replace the script with anything else, and then you've just run some random application that you had no idea you are actually going to run. That is a recipe for disaster. Now, there is a discussion to be had if you're using HTTPS. And generally, when you're downloading a script like this, you're downloading it from the GitHub repo directly, and GitHub uses HTTPS. But this video is about why you probably should avoid this installation method altogether. So not to say that you can't use it, plenty of people use it perfectly fine, but it does have some concerns. The biggest concern is if you look at the GitHub, you find this script and you just run it, you are running a script and you're running a script with sudo that you have no idea of the contents of. So this script could have things like rm commands to start deleting repositories, it could start sending data elsewhere using curl, it could have a fork bomb for the lols, it could even be something like a crypto miner. It could be any possible thing that you could run inside of a shell script, a Python script, a Perl script, depending on what the script actually is. And by giving it root access to your system, if it is a malicious script, it could do untold amounts of damage to your system. Now, generally, when you're downloading an application, you don't expect the developer of it to be malicious. But even if that developer is doing everything out of the goodness of their heart, there are still problems that can occur. So the interesting thing about a script is scripts are using interpreted languages rather than being compiled binaries. And compiled binaries don't generally have this problem. So a script does not need the entire script to be available to run the script. So let's say you're downloading a script and it's got 10 lines, for example. And for whatever reason, the download stops at line 5. So the lines prior to that are all perfectly fine. This will instantly be piped into sudo bash and will run. Now, in many cases, this might not be that dangerous. But what if the download stops at a point that's deleting a directory and it stops at an earlier point in that line. So it deletes something that wasn't supposed to be deleted. This isn't a major concern, but it certainly can happen. However, this can be mitigated by making use of functions. So if the ending of the function block isn't there, then the function will not actually run. A language like Python doesn't actually work in the same way because as long as the block is indented, everything inside of the block is in that function, Python doesn't have a function ender. A language like, say, Shellscript, for example, uses brackets to do that. But this idea of downloading random scripts and running them is also really bad from a security training standpoint. Let's say you are new to Linux. You haven't really developed any habits on how you should approach things or what you should do. So at that stage, I would encourage you to actively take the path that helps you develop good habits. And if later down the line, maybe those habits are not the most efficient thing you can do, sure, you can adjust them then. But I think it's better to have good habits as a baseline and then go from there if need be. Not to start from download and run random scripts with sudo and then just see what happens after that. The other concern I have is while you may fully trust the developer, it is much, much harder to fully trust the server. So when you are downloading a script like this, you're not worrying about checksums or encryption keys or anything like that. You are just downloading the script as is and then running it. Now, HTTPS does effectively guarantee until we find some sort of vulnerability with it that 
if you download the script, it has not been tampered with in transit, but it has no say on whether the server has been compromised and the script has been replaced with something that is malicious. Now, I'm not saying at all that running install scripts is a bad thing. I think install scripts are incredibly useful, especially for applications that have really weird build processes. So what can we do instead that is considerably safer? Well, we can break down the command into multiple steps. So first, let me go and download the script. So using something like wget or curl, whatever you want to use. Then we go and open up the script with something like less, vim, doesn't matter what you want to use. Just go and use something to open up the file. Have a look at the file and see if there's anything in here that seems out of place. Maybe it didn't download properly. That would be pretty obvious to spot. Maybe there are commands in here. We're like, wait, why is that obfuscated? What is that doing? Maybe there's any other number of things that seem slightly off. But if you look over the script and you see, okay, this is safe to run. Well, then you can just go and run it. So because we've already got a shell open, we don't need to open up a new shell. So sudo whatever the script is called, and then you're basically good to go. Now you might be saying, well, what about downloading something from your distro's repo? Isn't this just as dangerous? Now, in some ways, I think that is a valid statement, but the way that stuff is being downloaded is a little bit different. Firstly, if you're using a binary-based distro like Arch Linux, like Ubuntu, like honestly most of the distros out there, when you download an application, you are not compiling that on your system. If that was a malicious script that was used to compile the application, that was already dealt with when the application was compiled by the distro maintainers. So when you're running sudo apt or sudo pacman or anything like that, you're just installing the binary, and then when you run the application, you're not going to be running it generally giving it sudo privileges, you're just going to be running it as a regular user. Now, some situations, you may actually run it with sudo. For example, you're editing a root config with something like nano or vim. Now, it's entirely possible that a malicious package makes its way through the distro verification process, but by using your distro's package manager, basically you are pushing away that responsibility of checking it for yourself to that distro maintainer. And is that safe? Well, it depends on whether you trust the distro maintainers. I hope that if you're daily driving something, you trust the people that run it. Otherwise, I am really questioning your life choices. Also, I want to make something clear because I know someone's going to mention it. All of the problems I have with running random install scripts also exist when blindly installing something from the AUR as well. You should always be at least looking over that file to make sure there's nothing obviously malicious. Another problem with these install scripts is a lot of them have a pretty obvious problem. They're not written properly. By that I mean they have an install side, but they're missing the second part. There's no uninstall. There are so many scripts I've seen out there that are easy as hell to install, and then to uninstall them, you have to go and manually clean up all the files. If you're going to make an install script like that and not have it in the distro package managers, always have both sides of the coin. Now, what if the command was just a tad bit different? What if instead of using sudo, it was just this? So we download the script and then instantly pipe it into a shell. If this script is malicious or has some form of malformed command, it's obviously way less dangerous than nuking your entire system, but it still has the ability to nuke your entire home directory, and for most people, that's as valuable as the entire system. But it would be unfair to say this is any more dangerous than downloading and running some random binary, because any binary you run has the ability to delete your entire home directory, so in that way, this is no more dangerous than that. But it's very easy to go from having this habit to then adding sudo into this and thinking that not much has really changed. So I would still personally avoid doing this just to avoid forming bad habits. But while I can give you advice, at the end of the day, it is your computer. And if you are happy running sudo with a script like this, go ahead. I don't really care. Do whatever you want on your computer. But remember that convenience isn't always free, and by accepting more convenience, you are going to take some level of sacrifice. 
So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'm sure that every single one of you have seen this pattern at least once. And if somehow anyone hasn't, I'm really surprised. So if you haven't, let me know what you think about it. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to Johnny Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me. So I'm out.